Hello everyone, welcome to Dental Mate. Today in this video, we'll be talking about dentinal tubules and the odontoblastic processes. So let's get started. First of all, let us talk about dentinal tubules. What are dentinal tubules? These are basically microscopic channels of parallel tubules along with long cytoplasmic processes which are present into them. Okay. The minute parallel tubules containing long cytoplasmic processes of dentine of a tooth which communicates with dental pulp. Okay, so it extends from dentino enamel junction in the crown and the dentino cemental junction of the root to outer wall of the pulp. Okay, now if we talk about the types of dentinal tubules, then First up is C. It could have two types, primary curvature and the secondary curvature. The primary curvature type of the dentinal tubule, it is basically S-shaped. And the secondary curvature, it has small undulations and sinusoidal, sinusoidal course. Hota is kai, okay? So this is the primary curvature type of dentinal tubule. Okay, This one, s shaped ye completely and secondary curvature it is sinusoidal the primary curvature it is basically sigmoid course okay doubly curved doubly curved rega convex course and doubly curved it starts from the purple surface at 90 degrees and its first convexity the convex part is towards the tooth apex okay and it ends to dej or dentino cemental junction dcj in 90 degrees matlab it would start from pulp at an angle of 90 degree end at dcj or dej at 90 degrees first convexity would be towards the root apex doubly curved or it has a convex course it is a gentle sigmoid course s shaped next is the secondary curvature or the dentinal tubules having secondary curvature these have a sinusoidal course they are present over they have a sinusoidal course over entire length okay they are present basically near the root tip and along the incisal edges and cusps cusp tip root tip pe present over here mostly and these are basically almost straight okay next talking about the branches see the uh, dentinal tubules they can have terminal branches which are what the branches of the dentinal tubules near the terminals that is dentino enamel junction ka terminal kaha pe hai they are starting from pulp we read no they are starting from pulp ending at dej or dcj so their terminal is at dej or dcj now here the dentinal tubules they can give up branches which are known as the terminal branches these are more profuse in root dentine as compared to the coronal dentine okay next is a lateral branch see this is the zoomed view of terminal branches next are the lateral branches these are the lateral branches given out by the dentinal tubules the lateral canaliculi or microtubules they are present throughout the dentine okay they have a diameter of 1 micrometer or less and they originate at right angles. Remember, these are originating at right angles to the main tubules. They have a gap of 1 to 2 micrometers. Means, though lateral tubule, though lateral branch ke beech mein a gap of 1 to 2 micrometers is present. And they end in the interior tubular dentine. This is a zoomed view of a lateral branch. Iska jo width hoga, we are, I have told you already it is less than 1 micrometer or 1 micrometer. They start at 90 degrees to the main tubule. The gap between each tubule is approximately 1 to 2 micrometers. Okay. Now, if we talk about some structural details of dentinal tubules, what we can see is the ratio between 
the outer and the inner dentine surface is 5 is to 1. See, this is the outer surface of dentine and this marked with yellow is the inner surface of dentine. So, the ratio between this outer and inner is 5 is to 1 means the outer surface is 5 times broader than the inner surface. Okay? Now, if we talk about the tubules, see, the tubules are farther apart in the peripheral air, uh, layers and whereas they are closely packed near the pulp. See, here in the periphery, the tubules are farther placed, whereas in the pulp, they are closely packed. Now, if we see the ratio of number of dentinal tubules per unit area, it is 1 is to 4. Means, if one tubule is present in the outer surface, then four tubules are present in the inner surface. Usi inner surface mein char tubules milenge aapko, whereas one tubule in the outer surface. Why? Because outer surface is broader and inner, inner surface it is shorter in diameter, okay, in width you can say. So, here pe tubules are compactly packed, closely packed near the pulp, whereas in farther, uh, in peripheral layers it is farther placed. One would be in the outer surface and four in the inner surface. Next, if we talk about the diameter of the tubules, then it is uh, near the pulp cavity, the diameter is larger, whereas in the outer ends it is smaller. See, if this is the pulp cavity, here pe zada hoga or DEJ or DCG, terminal portion pe small, like this, the tubules are arranged. For example, if matlab, in uh, the terminal portion that is near DEJ or DCJ, it is approximately 1 micrometers, whereas 3 to 4 micrometers near the pulp cavity. Okay? Dentinal tubules are in more number in the crown and less in the root. Now, if we talk about odontoblastic processes. So, what are odontoblastic processes or odontoblast process? These are basically the cytoplasmic extension of the odontoblast cells. See, these are the odontoblast cells drawn with black. These are pulpal cells. Now, these cells, they give out cytoplasmic extensions. These are known as odontoblastic processes or Tom's fibers or dentinal fibers. Okay. Odontoblastic processes, Tom's fibers or dentinal fibers. Now, if we talk about the extent of this odontoblastic processes, they extend in a radial fashion. We have seen they are extending in a radial fashion throughout the dentine towards the DEJ and they are contained within the dentinal tubule. The pulpal cells, they reside reside in the peripheral pulp at a pulp predentine border. See, this is predentine, okay? And at this pulp and predentine border, the pulpal cells would be residing. Okay. Now, if we talk about the diameter, then, see, first of all, let us see this is the pulp, this is the predentine and this is dentine. So, the cell, it is present at pulp predentine border and there in the dentine, it is giving out its cytoplasmic process, also known as Tom's fibers or dentinal fibers. This is the odontoblast cell. The cytoplasmic process of the cell. Okay. Now, if we talk about the diameter of the cytoplasmic process, it is largest near the pulp, which is around 3 to 4 micrometers. Okay. This portion would be near pulp. So, the diameter is largest here around 3 to 4 micrometers. Next, when it enters into the dentine, it tapers and it is around 1 micrometer into the dentine. 
okay it contains numerous uh, cell bodies okay and certain microtubules microfilaments see it contains microfilaments of diameter approximately 5 micrometers and microtubules of diameter approximately 20 micrometers now these microtubules and microfilaments they are composed of tubulin actin and vimectin proteins along with that sometimes mitochondria fragments of c in sometimes there is mitochondria fragments of endoplasmic reticulum dense bodies resembling lysosomes microvesicles coated vesicles that may open to the extracellular surfaces can be seen but in young odontoblast sometimes what is seen is nestin and notch proteins these are very important proteins which are seen in young odontoblast in the sub odontoblastic layer during odontogenesis this protein is absent in adult tissue and it is re-expressed mind it this nestin and notch proteins are re-expressed during the reparative dentine formation this does not contain synthetic granules so no synthetic granules are present in the odontoblastic process see the structural component of the odontoblastic process it reflects its secretory role now how does it reflect there is transport of dentine precursors which is the principal activity of the odontoblastic process to transport the dentine precursors see what does it do there is transport of secretory vesicles and their release in the extracellular space these are the secretory vesicles transported and released in the extracellular space the collagen precursors are secreted and they are also released there is also a role of calcification initiating the process of calcification transporting the calcium and the modification of the matrix composition okay so what we can see what is the function of the odontoblastic process it plays a secretory role what is the secretory role that it is playing it is transporting the dentine precursors and helping in the formation of dentine what are the three different types of precursors it is transporting secretory vesicles collagen precursors and calcium that is it plays a role in calcification or mineralization of the dentine okay the secretory vesicles they are transported and they are released into the extracellular space collagen vesicles they are also released in the extracellular space from collagen precursors or vesicles from this and it initiates the process of calcification transports calcium and it also modifies the matrix composition by transporting calcium so this is it about the dentinal tubules and the odontoblastic process again i would say about the dentinal tubules what you need to remember is the ratio of the dentine present in the outer surface as compared to the inner surface is 5 is to 1 the number of dentinal tubules per unit area is 1 is to 4 okay means the amount of dentine and the number of dentinal tubules present the ratio is opposite this is it about the dentinal tubules do not forget to like share and subscribe to my channel stay tuned keep visiting thank you